one thing that my my father, especially both my parents, but especially my father, just drilled, especially into my head because I'm a hard-headed individual. Um, <laughs> my sister is always a little bit smarter about going about things that kind of way. Um, but you, you just you never put all your eggs in one basket. Always have a plan B, C, D, and E because plan A may not go the way you want it to go. For whatever reason, you know, things happen. And, you, you know, and the wrestling world is a is a big, is one of those big things because things can end very quickly. And, you know, at, if you do this long enough and all of a sudden you're in your mid-30s or, or 40s and, all of a sudden, that comes to an end. Well, you still got another few decades to make your living out of it. Now, what do you do? The only thing, you know, the only thing I knew how to do was bartend and wrestle. It's the only thing I was good at. <laughs> so I know, but not for the rest of my life that I want to be a bartender. And uh, you know, wrestling is what it is. It's the nature of the beast. As much as I love it, and it's in my blood. Um, I, there's, there wasn't a, my time was up, so to speak, at least for now. So, but I have a family to support. I have a wife that, yeah, to support, and uh, we gotta we gotta pay the bills. So, um, that being said, you know that entrepreneurial was always in, instilled in us. Uh, you know, always, always, always have a plan B. Always have a plan C. Find other things that you're that you like to do, and you know that way, if something happens, you got a backup plan. Definitely great advice uh, from Pops there for sure. Now with you know, talking about the wrestling business, did he encourage you to get into the wrestling business? Did he not want you to get in the wrestling business? How did you, you know, eventually become, you know, a big part of the wrestling business? No, he did everything he could to keep me from getting into the wrestling business. Yeah, he didn't. He, obviously, my parents' support, they've always been very, very great about supporting my sister and I and whatever it is that we wanted to do, for the most part. Um, but also, you know, he. He's been in the he's been in the wrestling business for a long, long time. He sees what it does to you. He sees what it does to your body. He's, you know the unstableness of it sometimes, and you know it's I'm sh- and being able, that was the dad in him. You know looking out for for me. You know, he he didn't. He he tried very hard to talk me out of it, but he also knew that there probably wasn't any way to talk me out of it. Um, so after after a few weeks or a few months or so of trying. I think uh, it was finally he realized that it just wasn't going to work. So, like, you know what? Let it just uh, go, let's go give her hell then. So if we're going to do it, we're going to do it as best we can. So that's what we did. And you definitely grew up in the wrestling business, you know, no doubt about that. But who actually did the training for you? Like, who was your main trainer when you actually decided, hey, I'm going to put it, you know, put on the boots and strap them up, and I'm going to jump in the ring? Mm, the first, my first training, my first wrestling school was um, Knox Pro out in California. That's uh, uh, Rakishi's school, uh, David, David Heath, Gangrel, and Reno Onohe, the Black Pearl. Those guys were those guys who were literally the first ones to break me in, so to speak. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal guys inside and outside of the ring. Um, they really care and love about love this business, and they care about training and and teaching you the right way. And it's a great, great group of guys. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, after that, after I got done in California, um, I ended up down in Florida and I ended up with Brian Nobbs, nasty boys. Remember them? Oh, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Brian Nobbs had his wrestling school. Uh, and as you can imagine, it was called nasty bill. (laughs) And, uh, and uh, that's that's kind of where I stayed until I got got going with TNA, and then everything else was uh, literally learning on the fly, you know, just getting out there and getting getting just getting it in from from guys that you know working with uh, working with all the veterans, which I had the opportunity to work with a lot of great ones, and very fortunate for that.